Beloved, it is a sad day. My Prandy Bismarck has got a loose, it's loose on the shaft. I was wondering in today's video, would it be possible to properly fix this in the field without a bunch of specialty tools in the shop? Let me go through my toolbox and see if we can't make this tip top with what we have on hand. This is what I had on hand to solve the problem. Will we be able to do it? And how convenient that Proho had a four in one in his truck. Um, I didn't. <laughs> All right, gentlemen, go pour yourself a drink. We're gonna be here a bit, but I think these conical wedges, it's rare that they come loose, but this was, uh, you know, this was hung in Spain where these new gen snap-on pliers are the business. All right, apply pressure. The head should come off. Now we've got all that wedge out of there. Oh, that hickory some solid wood, isn't it? Right there where it's all brown, that's where it's been sliding and rubbing. So we need to create a new shoulder down here where this, the wood is larger so that fits tight and recut that kerf in there, you know, probably down into here. Shall we proceed? You know I'm not gonna use this, that's not fair. You're not gonna have that on you. That's, that was unreasonable. <laughs> but you should have a, a bushcraft knife. This is my, uh, my new, my, my number one, made by Primitive Woodsman in North Carolina. Isn't that beautiful? This is my new go-to. This is retired, the old Spyderco, so you should have that. You could even do this with a sharp ax, but what we have to do is establish a taper. It's gotta be done very evenly. A taper down to meet where it was slipping. Oh, there we go. Oops. Hit you right in the head there. So we're hard up on the shoulder that I carved out. You can see, you know, the fresh wood line there. So we'll take it off and we'll have to cut this kerf down. The kerf is the, is the gap left by a saw. Very carefully, this is a very crude butcher's tool here, but if I'm careful, because it's such high quality, uh, I think I can cut that. Look at the saw. You can see the kerf of the saw blade there. Shall we hang it? You're going to need something heavy to seat this. Uh, if you have another hatchet, something, or if you don't, you'll have to get like a quarter piece of firewood. But I'll just seat it just, you know, quickly. That's already sliding down. So what you want to do, remember you've got iron to wood right here, so you know be careful, hit straight. I'm not worried about it, this handle's pretty robust. But you drive a handle into a head in all tools this way. It seems counterintuitive, but it, it's the correct way to do it. So you just strike it cleanly and sharply. And listen until you hear the, kind of the thud sound where it comes up hard on the shoulder. It's sounding pretty solid. You'll see when you get tight, look in there, little pieces of hickory squeezing out. You know, that's good. So I'll take my knife, carefully make a mark to see if it's still moving. Like that, right there. That little mark there. It's 
going to be shorter, which is probably better. Getting good solid strikes. Yeah, we're still going. There might not be. It's got to stop. I can see it tapers. Well, we're right there in the sea. Just above. Might drive it all the way through the handle or through, through the eye. Yeah, look at that. Now I'm way past my wedge. I might be making a new handle. You know, it's pretty tight. What would happen, just for fun, since the handle is going to be replaced anyway, what would happen if we, let's say we cut that down right above the, the top, top of that mall and drove in two of those round conical spreaders without a wedge? Do you think it would hold? We'd have a little shorter handle mall there than I like, but I get used to it. Similar to my axe already, so let's try it. Let's see what happens. All right, look at these bad boys. Two. Now, if you only had the one out in the field, you'd drive one in, but I have two. And I want to use this before I have to make another handle for it. What if we did two of these? That's a lot of spread. It's a lot of material. Let's give it a shot. I finally found the old stiletto, my titanium framer. Best hammer ever. Boy, that's a lot of force there. I think I'll finish off with a seven pound true temper here. There it is. Boy, those are in there for better, for worse. Shall we go try it out? What do you say we try it out on a piece of this beautiful red fur? Dog fur, of course a tree of my people. When Jack and I were splitting last night, a piece of firewood got kicked out into the water. I've been watching it for 24 hours. Put in the comments how long you think that will float there. <laughs> it hasn't moved since the last time I saw it. Oh, much shorter. Oh, goodness, that wood is so beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. It's clear vertical grain. This is what I tell you guys about being stringy, dug fur. That's why it's so strong for lumber. That's where the axaroon comes in handy for that sort of thing. Look at the color. And you contrast it with that ugly, look at that grain. Clear vertical. That would be absolutely beautiful finish wood. My goodness. See how the splitting axe does. Awfully grainy. Difficult for an axe, this dug fur. Well, gentlemen, I think it's gonna hold. Will I take this all apart and do it properly? You know I won't <laughs> until it comes loose, but it's not loose now, uh, and it's a whole lot better than it was. So I'll just uh, roll with it, see if we can get through uh, the season, and maybe next season, and uh, I'll report back. But uh, would it have held with one? You know, of course, we only had the one. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. But uh, kind of a unique, you know, this being a Spanish mall, kind of a, a unique um, handle shape that I have not seen before, so I, I don't think you would run into that with an American style. It's gonna have more of a taper on it, more of a shoulder. But I love the small, and I actually uh, am digging the shorter handle. I think I actually prefer it.
feels more manageable. All right, thanks for watching. May God bless you and your families. It's starting to rain. Pray for us, beloved. We pray for you constantly. May God bless you and your families. Please keep us in your prayers. We'll see you all on the next video.